What if I told you the food you've been told is hard to digest is actually the food that heals your gut? And what if that same food could reverse autoimmune disease, improve mental clarity, and eliminate sugar cravings? For good, welcome to the carnivore diet and let's talk about it. Today's video is your beginner's guide to getting started on the carnivore diet. Whether you're just carnivore curious, already low carb, or someone who's tried everything and still struggling, with chronic symptoms. You're going to leave this video knowing what to eat, what to avoid, and how to transition successfully. And most importantly, rather this powerful way of eating might just be the best thing you've never tried. And hang in there because I'm going to bust some big myths, including why meat is actually easy to digest, why you don't need fiber to poop, and why your kidneys might just thank you for eating more protein. So let me take you back to Mississippi, where I was visiting friends and family. I'm sitting at the dinner table, catfish on one side, cornbread on the other, and I'm the only guy with a plate full of ribeye and butter. Naturally, the questions start flying. Tony, you still not eating vegetables? Isn't meat bad for your heart? And what do you mean you don't miss bread? And I realize I've never made a concise video just walking people through what they need to know to get started with carnivore. So rather you're a patient, a cousin, or someone just fed up with your health, this one's for you. So what is the carnivore diet and why do it? The carnivore diet is the ultimate elimination diet. It removes all plant foods, grains, legumes, sugar, seed oils, and yes, even kale, and centers your plate around nutrient-dense foods like beef, eggs, and fatty fish. Think of it as your keto's tougher, wiser cousin. Yes, carnivore is a type of ketogenic diet. It just removes the guesswork. Now, is that extreme? Maybe, but I've seen miracles happen with this diet. No exaggeration, people with lifelong digestive issues suddenly are pain-free. Patients reversing autoimmune condition, mental fog lifted, mood stabilized, weight dropping when nothing else worked. And here's the kicker. The carnivore diet didn't just help, it transformed their health. So is the science still emerging? Absolutely. But the anecdotal evidence in the low carb community is overwhelming. That's why I always say, try it. Be your own study. This might not be the diet for everyone, but it's absolutely the healing diet some people never knew they needed. Now let's clear up one of the biggest lies in nutrition. Meat is hard to digest. Nope, not even close. Your body was built to digest meat. That's because your stomach produces hydrochloric acid and pepsin, enzymes perfectly designed to break down protein and fat. Meat is digested cleanly and efficiently. No bloating, no fermentation, no gas bombs. On the flip side, a lot of folks are reacting to plant compounds like lectins, oxalates, and phytates, and they don't even know it. So if you've got IBS, reflux, bloating, or even skin issues, meat may be the gut healing food you've been avoiding because someone told you it was bad. Who knew steak was actually gut friendly? So who's carnivore for? Let me be clear. It's hard to find someone who wouldn't benefit from at least trying an all meat diet, especially if they're trying to heal from something chronic. Rather it's autoimmune disease, metabolic syndrome, mental health struggles, or even just fatigue. This diet gives the body a chance to reset reduce inflammation, and finally absorb nutrients without interference. Now, the one group who should be cautious is folks with advanced kidney disease. I'm talking stage four or five. And even then, protein isn't the villain. It's a matter of working with someone who understands carnivore physiology. Healthy kidneys are not harmed by protein. In fact, the idea that meat damages kidneys is one of the most outdated myths in medicine. If you got kidneys that function and you're looking to prevent or reverse chronic disease, carnivore might might just be the best thing you can do all year. So what about vitamins, fiber, and nutritional deficiencies? Let's tackle this head on, starting with vitamin C. You don't need nearly as much on a low carb diet. Why? Because vitamin C competes with glucose for cellular transport. Less sugar equals a lower need. That's why carnivores don't get scurvy. What about fiber? It's not essential. Meat digests efficiently without it. Many people experience better bowel function with no fiber at all. Omega-3, you'll get plenty if you're eating fatty fish like salmon and sardines. If not, you might want to supplement with a high quality omega-3 oil. Electrolytes, early on your body dumps water and sodium. Salt your food generously and consider magnesium or potassium supplements in the first few weeks. 
Let's talk organ meats and why they matter. Organ meats are your built-in multivitamin. Liver is rich in retinol, which is a true vitamin A, B12, folate, choline, copper, iron, and more. Your ancestors prized it, and so should you. If eating it straight isn't your thing, freeze it in tiny cubes and swallow like pills, or take a high-quality desiccated liver supplement. You don't need to eat it daily, but even once or twice a week adds incredible nutritional value. What about the microbiome? Does the shift that occurs in your microbiome on the carnivore diet make you less healthy? Your microbiome will change. That's normal, but that's not bad. A plant-heavy diet supports fiber-loving bacteria. A carnivore diet supports protein and fat metabolizing bacteria. Diversity doesn't equal health. It depends on your fuel source. If your energy, digestion, and inflammation are improving, your microbiome is adapting in your favor. So don't panic because someone told you your bacteria count dropped. You're not treating a petri dish, you're treating you. Now let's talk about how to get started the simple and effective way. Step one, eat fatty meat. This is your fuel source now. Think ribeye, fatty ground beef, maybe a 80-20 or higher fatty portion, pork belly, lamb, chicken thighs with the skin on. Fat is not the enemy. It's your new energy currency. Step number two, eat enough. Do not undereat. Healing takes energy. Satiety signals work better on carnivore. But if you're tired or hungry, eat more. Step number three, salt everything. Seriously, salt is your best friend during this transition. Cramping, fatigued, lightheadedness, add more salt. Step number four, try this sample day. If you decide to eat breakfast, consider four to six eggs and butter, three slices of bacon, or two sausage patties. For lunch, how about a 10 ounce ribeye or chuck roast? Scrambled eggs on the side. For dinner, a half a pound ground lamb or pork belly, optional liver or aged cheese, optional bone broth. Snacks if needed, hard boiled eggs, beef liver bites, pork rinds cooked in tallow. Step number five, eggs and dairy. Use with caution. Eggs are great for most, dairy maybe. Try eliminating it for a few weeks, then reintroduce if needed. Step number six, simplicity wins. You don't need fancy carnivore recipes, unless you enjoy that. Meat, salt, fat, done. Less time cooking, more time thriving. Step number seven, troubleshooting. If you have low energy, eat more fat and salt. Constipation could be a change in frequency, not dysfunction. Add magnesium or adjust fat. Loose stools, reduce rendered fat, and ride it out. Step number eight, stick with it for about 30 days. Give your body time, commit, observe, learn, because this is an experiment in healing, not a prison sentence. You can always reintroduce foods later, but give carnivore a chance to show you what it can do. So is carnivore right for you? You won't know until you try. But if you've been stuck in the same cycle of fatigue, bloating, cravings, and inflammation, it just might be the solution you've been waiting for. And if this video helped you think differently about food, give it a like, drop a comment below, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss what's coming next. Because at the end of the day, it's not about being perfect. It's about being better than yesterday. And as we wrap up this video, make sure to check out the video on the screen where I interview the wonderful A. Day Fox, also known as the Black Carnivore. As we walk through an hour worth of content talking about how to transition into a carnivore diet, it's the perfect complement to this video. Stay well, stay curious, and stay full of steak and ground beef. I'll see you in my next video.